Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you're co coming in from. Good to see you. Um, I'd like to thank BK and Silverstein for hosting this master class. It started out as a master class to help the people that are entering the Silverstein contest that's coming up, help them prepare. Uh, someone can't hear? Okay. And so uh, I will go over things today to prepare you for the performance, what I call the performance. You happen to be using, I don't like contest competitions, but I like to think the video that you will be making and any other thing that you're going to be doing, it's a performance. You then will videotape that performance and you will send that file to a contest. But as all of this preparation is for your performance, that's where your mind and your heart should be during this performance. And if you have questions, put them in the question box. I'll try to get to them. As I was telling one of our hosts, I can't read and talk and those sort of things at the same time. So as we're going through, uh, please ask questions and feel free to raise your hand. Um, I can We can interact with each other. And so I wanted to talk about what I call the five W's of preparing for a performance. And they're the who, what, when, where, and why. And these are things that I don't necessarily consciously think of all the time, but they are all part of what I do to get ready for a performance. And I'm going to share my screen, I think. Somewhere. Is my screen showing? No. No. OK, hold on. Sorry about that. Yes. Yes, good. OK. And probably one of the most important things is who, and that's you. Uh, all the time, whenever you're with your instrument or without it, focus on your playing, your performance, your music making. You're the performer, an actor, a musician. and Anytime when you step out on that stage or you're in the recording studio or you're making this video for the contest, uh, I know the rule says you have to say your name, I think where you're from and the piece you're playing. Take your time, set yourself before you say that. After you say that, take your time before you playing. I saw a video a few weeks ago, the person said, hi, my name is Billy Bob and I'm from Orange. And and suddenly they started playing. So set that stage, let the audience come to you and into your world as a performer. The same thing, when you finish, keep that sound floating on the air and let the audience live in that moment. And then you can, if you have the ability to edit your video, you can fade out. If you don't, then you can slowly walk to where you're stopping it. When you're playing, stay in the moment. Focus on those little black dots in front of you. If you make a mistake, keep going. Don't react. Forget it. It's in the past. Always when you're playing, look forward. You're on to whatever is next. Forget what happened. And very importantly, especially for this contest and any performance, you need to give people, and if you want to think of judges that are going to be watching and listening, you need to give them a reason to listen to you and to keep listening. You have to give people a reason to hire you, to choose you. Remember, first impressions are very important. That first note, that first phrase can open or shut the door. Um, gave a master class a few years ago and very, very good player. And he stood up to play the Mozart. And 
bum, bum, bum. Everything after that first note was very good, but I was so assaulted musically and my ear by that accent. We spent about 15 minutes on getting teaching him how to start a note with just sound and air and not an accent. Then when he played it, it was so much more better to listen to. Um, you want to play to your strengths, whether it's your sound, your technique, your multiple tonguing, whatever is yours. If you have all of them, that is great. I will never, ever, and have never, will never win a competition for double tonguing. Just, I rarely do it. It's not one of my skills. If there's a double tonguing competition, if then I won't be in it. If I am in it, I will lose it. There are judges who will, that is what excites them. So different judges and also the audience, almost everybody wants you to do well, but different things excite different people. Quick double tonguing, um, circular breathing. I have almost zero interest in that. It can be impressive to me for about five seconds. And then I'm like, okay, fine. You've shown me you have that technical ability, but what are you saying to me as a musician? Of course, it depends on the piece. If it's some um, virtuosic piece that needs to be double tongued the whole way through and you do a Paganini piece uh, for five minutes and then that, yes, that's impressive. Um, also in your head, don't worry or be concerned with other players. They, that has nothing to do with you when you are performing. Yes, we can be competitive. If you're interested in entering the contest, then yeah, you're competitive. But what other people are doing has nothing to do with what you're doing. Let, let that get into your head. Uh, have fun when you're doing it. Make music. This is all about you. You want to show the audience, the judges, who you are. And Gervais de Pire, one of the greatest clarinetists of the 20th century, who was my longtime teacher, <clears throat> told me very early in my studies with him, <clears throat> he, in a lesson 40 years ago, he told me, do something, say something, don't be predictable. Now, he was saying this to me as a soloist and a chamber musician. I don't know if in an orchestra you can be so <clears throat> unpredictable. Um, oh, and I'm sorry, it says don't, yeah, don't be, yeah, predictable. So I have kept that piece of paper in my clarinet case. So when I always look at it when I pull my clarinet out. <clears throat> so each piece I'm playing, each phrase, I want to do something with it. I want to say something with it. I want to be creative. That's the predictable, unpredictable part of it. So the next is the what. So my, what I do each day, if I have time, if I wake up and I've got to be somewhere in a half hour, I don't have time. But if I have time, I try to do a slow methodical warm up. I add one new element at a time. I start with air and embouchure. And let me switch to, if I can figure this out. Yeah, this is my daily warm up. <clears throat> um, I start with air and embouchure. This whole first page, speed is not important. It's all about air. This is warming up your lungs, your air, your body, your lips. You don't have to worry about fingers, tongue, anything else. So I do these twelfths, <clears throat> take your time, and in between them, there's that breath mark, take your time. Then down near the bottom, you will see where I start on the A. I put the register key down, you go into the next register. Lift my first finger, you go into the next register. This tells me if my reed is working in all the different registers and if my embouchure is flexible enough to get into each of the different embouchures and each of the embouchure that's needed in those registers. Find out, okay, this reed is not going to work today. 
go to another read. Don't waste your time practicing on a bad read unless you're going to spend the time to work on it. And you will see in all of these, I start niente in the long tones. I end on niente. <clears throat> I think of niente, you have all that sound in you, and you're floating. My concept is you're always floating on air. You're spinning air like a singer. And as you go to niente, I have this concept of floating the sound and this air out and up. Because when we play clarinet and we're ending a phrase and we're running out of air, often we will end up doing this because we're squeezing out every bit. That Physically, that's no good. So I find I can hold a note much longer if I'm thinking of floating. This keeps the chest open. It also changes a bit of the embouchure as you're thinking of floating that air out instead of tightening up. Um, hold on. What? Yes. Then I add fingers to the equation. Um, scales very slow. I also start my scales from the top. We are, for so many years, you start from the bottom, you go up and you go down. And I, just to mess with my mind, I start from the top and go down and come back up, end on the high note. These are the things that are not so easy to do. And so I want to start with that. It's easy to start. It's harder to start from the top. And again, float that sound out at the end. Then I go to chromatic. So you are adding more fingers. Same thing. Start small. Um, with, then go to intervals. Thirds, fourth, fifth, sixth. Start small and increase. Then I add the tongue. And I add the tongue going back to all of those things that you just did, the air and the embouchure, the scales, the chromatics, and repeated notes also, just on one note. And you can play around with how you do it. So da 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 or da 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 Find what's working for you, move it up a little bit until it, and keep that working. Then what I do every day to self-evaluate where I am, because I have good days, I have bad days, and certain days, certain things are working and certain things aren't working. And to evaluate where I am that day, I play a certain piece that I have picked that I can play well. And I use that to evaluate myself. Uh, one that I use, and you can pick any any of your pieces. Usually I pick an etude, so it's lots of notes. I use this. It lets me know, and depending, I can use different tempos. It lets me know if my fingers are nimble. It's like, okay, my fingers are nimble. Ah, these large skips, they're no good. Okay, remember that. Um, intonation is good today, or it's not. So Because I know the piece so well, that listening to what I've done, it's telling, my playing is telling me what I need to work on that day. It's like, oh, okay, I need to work on large intervals today because they were really messed up in this. And that guides me to what I need to work on particularly that day. You don't need to practice so much the things that you're really good. Um, I can hold a note for a long time. It feels good. It sounds good. I don't need to practice that every day to impress myself. I need to work on what is not so good that day. Um, then I move on. Uh, since we're talking about a performance or the competition, I move on to working on the repertoire. Uh, use your time wisely. Carefully evaluate which sections need the most work. Don't sit down and if you're playing Stravinsky three pieces and just sit down with number three and go. <gasps> work on if you know that you need to work on it. Find those sections. Go from the back. Work on that because we so often work on the beginning 
we mess up, we stop there. Start from the back. And then you'll be back at the beginning and play through it. If you need to work on articulation, breathing, phrasing, intonation, listen to yourself, work on that. And especially for a concert competition, record yourself. Take frequent breaks to give your body a break and your mind a break, but use your ear to listen to that recording. Um, another thing that I do is I sing my pieces or certain phrases before I play it. That gives me a sense again of the breathing, where I will need to breathe. Um, I'm not a fan of circular breathing. Uh, some contemporary pieces, yes, you have to, but I don't think you need to circular breathe in Mozart or Brahms. Uh, you want to sing through these. Singers are not double, are, are not circular breathing. You want to phrase these, so sing your phrases. It also, that takes it away from the technique of the instrument. Uh, you're not worrying about fingerings or tonguing. You're just singing it. And so isolate them or sing it all. Um, one thing that I also do is either a phrase or a little bitty section that's having some little finger problems or connection problem. I play it forward. I play the notes backwards. I don't worry about the rhythm or the articulation, but I want to feel that connection between the notes. It's sort of a pendulum. And it can be two notes, it can be three notes, ba da 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 or da -la 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 -la. however much you need. And going backwards, of course, is much harder. Take your time. It's all about breathing through the connection between those notes. And then you will find usually that playing it forward is a lot easier. And you, you start hearing and feeling the relationship between those intervals. Um, with all of this, all of your playing, we have a tendency if something's difficult, we back off on the air. Keep, keep blowing the air. If it's difficult, don't do your shoulders this way. Don't tighten up. Maybe you're afraid something isn't going to happen. If you're going up into the third measure and you're like, oh, no, that note might not come out. Just keep blowing. Um, another of my teachers, uh, Rushanov, used to always get on me when I would tense up or whatever. And he would just, with a few extra words that I won't say here, he would just say, blow air, wiggle fingers. Something will come out. And he particularly meant this in a concert because maybe the audience won't know, especially if it's a new piece. Um, just keep blowing air, wiggle fingers, some sound will come out. And that also teaches you to keep moving forward and to keep that airflow going. Working on intonation. Um, I play very slowly with the tuner. Um, most of what I do is working with piano. So I use that tuner that's going to be the same as the piano. If you're working with strings, the intonation can be different. But I will tune each note. Uh, then I will also play a drone so I can tune the intervals. And not only hear it, but I feel when I'm playing with piano, I feel, often I feel when I'm in tune or when I'm out of tune. And sometimes I don't even know if I'm sharp or flat. Um, I don't have time to think that way. I just know I'm out and my body quickly adjusts whether it's to get back in tune, whether I go up or down. So you start feeling, especially using the drone, where that interval fits, where it, what it feels like. And as in everything, play, practice everything with a metronome at some point, not all the time, uh, but use that metronome as a tool. Play very, very slowly. I have a concert next week, and there is one piece that's kind of tricky. And played it a few years ago, and it's eighth note at 180, 
and the pianist starts the piece and he started it much faster than that. And I was not prepared for that much faster tempo, but I had to go with him because he had the beat. And the whole time I felt like I was on the edge. I think if I had practiced that piece more slowly and then also faster than the 180, I would have been prepared. So this week I've been spending a lot of time with that piece, with the metronome, very, very slowly. So if the pianist next week takes off, it's a different pianist, which is good. Um, hopefully I am secure enough that I can handle whatever tempo it is. Um, after you work on your sections for concert, play your entire program or your piece without stopping. Tell yourself before you start, I'm not stopping no matter what. Record it if you can. Listen back. Evaluate, practice, play, repeat. Uh, and recording your practice sessions, whether it's audio or video, is very, very helpful to self-evaluation. If you can, have your friends or your teacher watch, and especially this competition and also performances, people will be seeing you. So you need to figure out what it is that you might be doing that looks good or doesn't look so good. Um, if you are rocking back and forth um, the whole time, that's not so good, especially if the tempo is different than you're rocking back and forth. It's going to drive people crazy. If you are standing up and you're one of these people that squats every time there's an accent, um, Maybe some people like that, um, and that's fine. I don't. It drives me nuts. I'm like, why do you have to physically, aggressively express every accent or the beginning of every phrase with a downward shovel scoop or hatchet? So you will learn from watching. Maybe it feels good when you do that. Maybe it you think that's fine. That's your choice to make. Know that some people in the audience will like what you do, some people won't, and that's life. Again, be yourself. If that's what you have to do to make music, then that's what you have to do. Um, again, think about, especially a lot of these pieces, I think, in this competition are going to be solo pieces because of COVID and not being able to work with a pianist. But even if working with a pianist, that's a little more difficult. Think about the timing and the pacing in your music making. Take time before and after your phrases. Your breath, use that air and that time to continue. When you have a breath, when you have a rest, when you have a breath, the music continues. That action that you're doing, the world that you've created, it's still going. It's not like da 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 da, and it stopped. Da 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 da. Stop. Da ba da 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 bam. You want it to feel that it continues, um, just as a sixteenth note can have meaning. A split second of silence has meaning between those notes. Um, in Japanese culture, there's this beautiful word called ma, and it is the gap or the space or a pause, and it can be architecture, it can be visual art, it can be used in music. And it's that the silence still is carrying the music, that emptiness still carries the music forward. And I think it's very important especially when you're playing slow um, solo pieces, that you keep that in mind. The composer may have written, you know, these notes and put a breath and then there's a bar line and the next phrase start. I, most composers do not want you to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Do the phrase and then start the next phrase, just like we speak. Um, perhaps some of my speaking today has been run on sentences. So that's what I'm talking about. Take your time with those phrases. If you have an incredibly 
sensitive partner that you're playing with, whether it's piano or not, they will breathe with you. Um, on that point in working with your partners, whether it's pianists, it drives me nuts when someone's getting ready to play and they turn to the pianist and they maybe go one, two, start. Um, I have been told I'm difficult to work with sometimes by a few people, but I've been playing for many years. So if it's only a few people that have said that's fine. I tell them, and some of them know, I breathe in, I blow out. When I blow out, I'm going to, if I've got a good read, when I blow out, I will be making sound. I do not have to conduct that downbeat. Sometimes on very tricky pieces, which have a tricky entrance, yes, but the beginning of the Brahms, da, 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 and that's it. The pianist will be there. Trust your pianist to be there. If they're not, you may need to train them. Maybe they've never worked with a wind player. It's like a string player. Often when working with a string player, I'll tell them, I'll watch you. Because when their bow moves, they're going to make sound. When they lift the bow, their sound is ending. And I can watch that and follow that. That's easier than them watching me stop my air. And so you have your ear to work with, but also that visual. So trust your pianist. And it's a beautiful thing when you're both on stage or if it's a quintet, quartet, whatever, and you've set the audience and yourself in this beautiful bubble. Everyone knows something is going to happen. You're there for music. You're not there for clarinetists conducting their pianos. And you just start the music. And it's a beautiful thing when that happens. The win. Obviously, practicing as often as possible. Um, especially for performances and these videos, practice at different times of the day so you remain flexible and you can perform, rehearse at any time of the day or night. Um, I rehearsal last night. Uh, tomorrow morning, I will be rehearsing at 9 a.m. I have to be able to play at the same level, whether it's at 9 a.m. or 9 p.m. With this contest and you're doing videos, you may have a little more control over when you are playing. Um, if you have that control, practice when, if you know you're going to videotape at 4 o'clock, practice every day at 4 o'clock. Run your program so your body and your mind is used to playing at 4 o'clock. Maybe 4 o'clock is a time when you're a little tired. This will teach you how to overcome that. Um, in the week or so, usually it's with me about two weeks before, but very especially closer, be aware of what you eat or drink that might hinder or help your playing. Um, I avoid spicy foods, some coffee, although I don't do that. I avoid carbonated drinks, uh, sweets and salts um, that it can affect you when you're playing that you get dried out. And what I'm very careful is I don't make drastic changes to my diet the few days before a performance. Uh, it can affect what your body is doing and what you're used to. If you're used to eating oatmeal every morning and then decide the day of a concert you want pizza that's probably not a good idea um, when you're practicing if you're practicing by yourself take those frequent pauses don't play an hour without stopping you need to give your mind and your body a break this helps with concentration and those frequent pauses actually help with physical endurance your body is learning and building up those muscles. And for years, I taught an elderly gentleman who was a brain surgeon and also a brain scientist at Columbia. And he was fascinated and did lots of studies with musicians on these electrical impulses. And so he 
would be testing people playing one difficult phrase, stopping. The next thing, go to some, even if you hadn't perfected it, go to something else. You're messing with different, and he would show me these graphs of, you know, different areas in the brain that we're doing, you know, Mozart might be here, Prokofiev might be here, and then go back to the other one. So you're fresh with that. And so going back and forth. Uh, having said that with the frequent pauses, make sure that you play through your program as if you're on stage. If you can do it in the place you're going to record this video, or if you're doing a concert, that's even better. Practice with the lighting, what you're going to wear. Um, as one of the other masterclass people said, after a year of being locked down, some of our clothes are not fitting the same way as they did before. So don't the day that you're going to perform or do a video say, oh, pull out something you haven't worn in a year. Practice in it um, so you feel comfortable in it. Um, practice and perform the same time of the day and you will find what you need for that more mental and physical energy. And the where, okay, same, some of the same in print. Practice, record, perform in as many different places as possible. So when you walk into a place, um, I've been in rehearsals, the rehearsals have been in all different places different pianos, and I pity pianists who have to learn this early on. Know how to walk into a room and play your best. Don't have, you know, you're so used to, you know, my room, which sounds great, and it has reverb. Yesterday I was in a place it had no reverb. Yes, that I'm, uh, I'm not upset. I realize it. You deal with it. So you learn to adjust to the room. Um, again, Practice, record, videotape, especially this competition, where you're going to record. If it's sitting here, if it's sitting in your bathroom because of the acoustics, if it's outside, wherever you have decided to make your video, practice there, videotape there. So you can start working with the lighting. And some of these next things, um, mic placement. If possible, not so close. We don't want to hear your breathing. We don't want to hear key clicks. Uh, you do, for the competition, have to show your torso. You have to show your face, your hands, and the instrument. Now, if you're using your iPhone, and it's like if I was using this computer, um, this won't, I think it gets taken out of the competition immediately, or maybe they write you back and tell you you need it. So I would have to do this, which is still no good because you can't see my face. So you have to adjust how far the mic and the, the video will be. Um, have to see the hands and the instrument. Um, so you cannot have the video with a music stand in front of you. It can, probably best angle is about 30 degrees, so they see you. Um, if it's completely from the side, that probably is not going to work on clarinet because they won't be able to see one of your hands if you're completely from the side. So you're, this angle, it's good. And, but you need to be framed so you see all of the instrument. Um, don't be too far away. Uh, last week we saw someone do a performance and it looked like the video camera was in the balcony and he was this big there. I mean, he sounded great, but there was no way to see his hands for this competition, for a performance, who cares? But for this competition, you do need to be able to see the hands. Um, if you can, and you probably have a lot of experience of this with the last year with the lighting, uh, you don't want an open window behind you with a lot of glare. Uh, so be careful about what's behind you. Um, again, 
we're videotaping the concert last week. The videographer has been giving us all this advice. Don't wear white because a bright light can sort of shine off of it. He doesn't want us to wear so much dark clothing because it just gives a flat sort of feel to it. But black is, for this competition, is perfectly fine. Um, he also said, be careful if, say, the wall behind you is brown. Don't wear brown. It can sort of sink into it. Um, and then camera angle, which is one of my pet peeves, um, even before COVID hit. You see all these people recording, and I don't, I don't know where. The, I guess it's on their laptop like I am here. And they're, I, I don't want to play too much because I don't want to blow yours up. But they're, so you're looking, okay, it's a great view of my fingers, but you're also looking up my nose. Um, I don't think it's a very complimentary angle to play. Uh, and there you don't need a stand you can just i mean my laptop now is i'm it's on my piano but on some books so it's higher angle it so we're not looking up your nose and also the opposite where probably is not a great angle although for this competition i'd rather be looking down than up uh, cuz then you have a very clear view of your fingers um choose a good background whatever it is if you can um, a lot of us are just stuck in our rooms uh, especially for this competition it's open to everyone there's no financial uh, barrier to be in this if you are in your closet because that's the only place that you can do this video that is fine judges especially now with all that's been going we we see beyond that it's not a matter of seeing through it we see beyond uh where you happen to be practicing but if you can just don't be in front of a bright light uh have the brighter light in front so if you're in your closet maybe op keep the door open and have the light there um and darker clothes come across better than brighter white and as and although and i wore this shirt today the striped shirt um maybe avoid a striped shirt for a video because it's doing weird sort of things at least on my camera view right here um you might like that look so that's fine so those are the where and the why uh this is a big mental thing why are, why do you practice it doesn't have to be some big deal. It's simply what you do. You're a musician, whether you are in the 10th grade or you're 50 year old professor, you're a musician. When you are playing your instrument, you are a musician. If you are a musician, you will always, if you're smart, you will always be a student. Don't, don't think of yourself as a student. You're a musician, you are learning. And it is what we do. We practice if we want to go out on stage and perform and not be embarrassed by what we do. <clears throat> um, so you want to be prepared and stay in good shape so you can make the music you want to make, that you're not struggling out on the stage. Um, following all these who, what, and when, and where will, I hope, help you get to that peak in your performance. A um, little bit about performance anxiety. <clears throat> some people have it, some people don't. Sometimes I am horribly gripped by it. And some often people don't believe me when I say that. But in some performances, and they can be whether it's at Lincoln Center, or the nursing home down the street, there are times backstage when I will in my head and sometimes even out loud go, why am I doing this? No one is making me do this. Um, that is my nerves. Like, I don't have to go do this concert. I am that nervous. Uh, and then I just tell myself, just if I'm that nervous, just focus on those little black, literally, 
Focus on those little black dots that are in front of you. Don't think about all the people or the two people in the audience. Focus on what's in front of you. Uh, you can do lots of research on how to reduce anxiety. Uh, there's, there's all sorts of different ones, deep breathing, relaxation, meditation, exercise. I'm not going to give you medical advice on how to reduce your anxiety because like for me, meditation would just make me more nervous. Um, if I have to sit there and empty my brain, I'm going to get nervous because uh, first off, to empty my brain is going to take too much trouble. So whatever works for you. So do your research. Try the different things. Again, focus on those little black dots. Um, then get excited. Some of those times when I'm out backstage, I'm going, oh, my God, no one made me do this. I, I took this job. I, of course, I want to get paid, so that could be a reason why I'm getting ready to walk out on stage. But then I can turn it, oh, I am so excited for whatever reason. It's a beautiful piece, or there's people in the audience that I like, or I know when the concert is over, I'm going to get to eat pizza that I haven't eaten in two weeks, or it's a piece written for me, and it's the premiere, and it's like, oh, Finally, we, we bring this music to life. And whether it's a premiere or Mozart that you've been playing for several hundred years, each time you play, you are bringing those little black dots that you are focusing on. You are bringing those dots to life. So, and then the other mental thing, and I do this often, I tell myself, I've been here before. Even if you haven't, the first time I played at Carnegie Hall, I was very nervous and I had to tell myself, ah, it's a stage, it's a floor. I've played this music before. There's a piano. I know what a piano is. I've done this to try to get out of the situation. You've done it before because probably when you make this video or you do a concert, it's probably not your first concert. That's a different subject. It's what you do. So live that performance. And as in my music case, do something, say something, don't be predictable. And one of my other main teachers, Cal Opperman, <clears throat> would get ready for a concert. And he was very involved uh, with the technique of what I would be playing concert would be over whether he was there or not he would call me go how'd it go and if i said something more like oh it went great or oh i really blew this section and he'd go good and he'd holler next and it has been one of my guiding principles as a performer since he said that enjoy what you did but when you wake up the next morning, that behind you, you start focusing on what's next. For me, that helps me keep moving forward. And it keeps me looking for something new to play. Uh, most of what I play is music that's written for me. So I'm always looking for new composers and new pieces, or if it's Mozart a new way to play. It's always what's next, what's next, what's next. Little bit of a drawback on that is concert I gave in November. I don't remember the full program um, because I am already in my head thinking about what is next. I'm consumed with the music I will be playing or I am playing. What I've already played, whether it was a big success or not, you move ahead. So the ups and downs are not such big valleys and mountains. You just sort of even out. You're a musician going through life, and you're just playing, and it's what you do. And that concludes the run-on sentences. So um, I hope there's going to be some people that are going to play. But if you have any questions, 
about anything I said or anything I didn't say, please um, raise your hand, unmute yourself, and ask away. It'd be nice to have a, a discussion. Nobody wants to talk to me. Okay. <laughs> um, speaking of nerves, because um, that's subject, many people, if some of you can discuss, talk about what do you do um, to reduce your nerves, say, the day before a performance? Anyone like to speak up on what they do? I'm, I'm curious with any age or any level uh, what it is that you do to reduce those nerves and make you perform better. Yes, uh, Lish. Yes. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. I definitely lay off the coffee. Oh. So you're right about the food, salt level. It really does affect the face. So I, I'm... I appreciate that you brought that up because sometimes we don't think about that, the actual how physicalness. Does, how does the salt affect your, are you talking embouchure? Yes. The dr dryness or, yep, yep okay. Both. Yep. Yeah. So I'm glad that you're also affected. You're thinking that way as well. So I yeah. appreciate it. Although, and uh, Lish and I perform a lot together. She has probably seen that quite often though backstage, I have a can of Red Bull. Uh, mm -hmm. And I have found that Red Bull affects me in a much different way than coffee. It doesn't make me jittery. It gives me this energy. I don't, coffee makes me jittery. Uh, I, I love green tea. I tried that once during a concert and my mouth completely dried out from the astringent green tea. And I was sitting there, one technique, if you're playing and you're in the middle of a concert, you can just sort of bite down on your tongue, not too hard. It activates the salivary glands and it gives you some moisture in your mouth. And boy, that I learned my lesson of do not drink green tea before a concert and during a concert. Yeah, so. Uh, is there anyone here today that wants to play? or play one play live or play one of your videos and then we can discuss how wonderful you are raise your hand make your video anyone hello see anyone coming in so no one to play for us today uh if you have a video uh not necessarily it could be the one you're entering for the competition if not uh any video uh you can um some someone here who's the boss can allow you to share your screen and then play it and then we can talk about it if uh if there's anyone who wants to share a video of their playing, we can share your screen. Raising of hands, no? Ah, yes, that's a good thumb. Hi, how are oh, you? Good, nice. I could play. I just need to get my instrument set up. I just finished teaching and I don't have it out. Okay. Is that okay? Can I take a yes, second absolutely, get we'll, okay. we'll wait for you. We will, we'll chat, go ahead. Okay, I've been performing, or I was planning on performing Kahuzak, or the Cantalini. Okay. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. I'll get Great. it set up. Great. Take your time. Oh, boy. Let's see. What is she? She has sax, flute, and clarinet. Let's see what instrument she brings to us. <laughs> Can I and interject? Yes. So Ilana has studied with Todd, the gentleman oh, here, as a master's yep. student and has her master's in multiple woodwinds. Oh, so wonderful. I'm so excited she's going to play something. 
Yeah, me too. Great. Hey, Thomas, just FYI, you are in control. So you, ha you have. Oh, control. okay. I. I'm not sure. Well, she'll come back on and she will unmute and we will see her video. Good. Something that I like to do before a big performance, you know, kind of going off what you said in order to celebrate, if, if you're really nervous, try to take that energy and translate it into a positive energy. I like to treat myself the day before to something, you know, maybe a new suit or take myself out to dinner, you know, to like celebrate that it's a big deal and to, you know, kind of take that nervous energy, at least make it positive <laughs> for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, um, one thing I do, if it's a nighttime concert, usually that afternoon, um, it may sound really vain, but I give myself a facial, uh, like yeah. a, peel, a peel off mask, <laughs> just because when you peel it off, it feels good. And I, and I just, and I know when people are a hundred feet from you on the stage, they aren't going to realize the difference right. but and and i actually don't want people looking at me when i play uh so but i know they will so i will you know give myself a facial yeah take a bath um and that's sort of my little treat yeah sure sure yeah hi hello hello <laughs> Thank you for waiting. I've taught oh, flute and saxophone all day, so I didn't have the clarinet out. <laughs> I wasn't sure if this was going to be a playing master class or if we would just hear you speak. Yep. So take your, are you entering the competition? I think so. I decided last week. So okay. I, these out. I haven't played it in years. <laughs> yep. So it's been fun to put it back together. I think um, I have a friend who plays piano and she's going to record the piano part. And I think the okay. player will just record over her audio. Yep. Yeah. Great. Uh -huh.
you so much for playing. You're welcome. Oh, great. So some very general things, and again, uh, again, uh, there were times when there was some clipping, uh, sound went out just for a second, uh, but your your sound, what I can hear, is very lovely sound, and I think very appropriate to this piece. Uh, one general thing that you might want to keep in your mind as you're playing this is the thought of elegance. Mm -hmm. And it's it's this beautiful French piece, and it's just everything, almost everything. There's a few pieces that get into the ground and onto, the, but most of it is very lifted. Not necessarily light, but just very lifted, and just think elegance and floating on this sound and your fingers just as nimble as can be um could you i'm gonna uh, i hope you can hear me when you're playing because i'm gonna um start and stop you okay so if you could start the beginning again Oh. Yeah. Um, I don't want to hear you breathe. The, the first thing I heard, I didn't hear that B flat. I heard, um, and right before you played, your shoulders went up. So when I'm breathing, I often think, um, of course, air has to come in, but I think down and out. So, and your shoulders, all of this, your rib cage should already be open. Of course, playing sax and clarinet, sometimes we, you know, we have this clarinet bump back here because we do this. But if you can roll this a bit, and your shoulders as you're sitting here now look absolutely fine. You breathed and you did this. So again, take a big breath down and out, be prepared and then play. Um, and it could be the mic is close to you, but if we were in a recording studio, you'd drive the engineer nuts with that breathing. Um, try to keep, especially at the beginning or when you have rest where you have control over how much time to breathe in, think of opening your throat, opening your mouth, and breathe in on ah. So it's just if you if you're tied up here, you're gonna go or and or if your lips are closed or your all of this is uptight or it's just the way you breathe and you go because you're gonna blow out like this. Well, you have time to be completely relaxed. You're not using your embouchure to start the piece uh, in your breath. So take your time. And the first thing we want to hear is a ya da 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 di da 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 And just as elegant and as light as possible. This is not the beginning of Brahms. Um, so just, and again, uh, you're a good enough player that I can get into so just a little bit extra weight on that B flat. And did you articulate the B flat? I'm doing more of a breath attack. Good. Okay. okay. Yeah. Especially on a note like that, which is easy to start. I'm a big fan of starting uh, phrases without the devil, the tongue. So just, <laughs> and just start. Uh, your pianist will hopefully be, uh, oh, you're going to be playing to a MIDI track. So you have a little less control, so you will actually have to be there. But be prepared that you can just breathe into that phrase. Yeah. Can you sing me the first two measures, the first phrase? Okay. So... I would not use a different syllable on each one. Okay. Da -bi -da -bi -da -bi -da -ba -da. Just say, and I don't, I'm not really concerned about the, the exact pitches, if it could be that, but da -um. 
because you're not you're not articulating any of those ex, those next note but so your line and your breathing and how you'll be floating it da um if you're working on rhythm yeah then yeah da 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 but I want you to get this beautiful, floating, elegant line up. So start again. Uh, playing? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop you. Because this will happen, because this happens many times in the beat. Just a little bit extra. The da 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 not ba da 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 So if you're thinking like we we're taught, Oh, think, think subdivision before we play. We don't want to start that play phrase. Da 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 da. I I can turn you know my computer on to or the metronome to hear that. I want to hear you sing that phrase. Da 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 da. So just a little bit extra weight on the bottom note. Uh, don't back off on the air. Just a little extra before you go up. Okay. And stop. So where are you going to where's your first breath going to be? Um I have it marked in, in measure ten, right after the G before the, the C. G? Okay. <laughs> Take your take your time there because you're gonna have a long ways to go. Okay. Um, when you get to that after your little uh, triplet runs, that can be when you land on that bounce bounce off of it. <laughs> so you go and and those yes every note is important but some are more important so you hear that so the ear is hearing and then it sound opens up on that quarter note f sharp so um that time the little extra on the b flat was a little bit too much <laughs> but, yeah um and Keep those dotted eighths and sixteenths accurate. A um, little bit of a tendency with you, and it could be Zoom, I'm not sure. Your dotted eighths, the long note, it sounds like you're backing off the air just a bit. Keep pushing the air. Don't have the air make the sixteenth note. The air is there. The embouchure there is there. It's the change of fingering that will make the sixteenth note because it's <laughs> slurred. So, da, um, so instead of and could you hear the difference? I can't tell on Zoom, but so the you want so you're put like a singer, although a singer sometimes, if it's a word, might go la, um, but you want la, um, so keep the support, the air going. Uh, start from beginning again. And a lot of what I'm going to be saying, you can, because it keep a lot of the same stuff happens through the piece. Nice. <laughs> you can do that. Okay. <laughs> That little bit of a flip. Okay. So, and you're, you've got, uh, bar three and bar five, which is straight 16th notes that are tied over, they're not quite even. Uh, so start again, other than the little, you know, extra on the B flat, which is very good this time, 
try to make sure that they are even um, so I don't get even in this little bit that I don't start feeling. Uh, and that ba da da ba da da. The tied note, the quarter note A tied to the 16th. Make sure that that G comes in right where the second one should be. Okay. Uh, from beginning again. <laughs> much better. Uh, on sustained notes, um, I usually use vibrato. Um, I'm not advocating to someone I've never met whether and not my student whether they should. But that first sort of line, that F, um, Do something with it. If you just sit there, um, it it's and it happens continuously. It's going to drive people nuts. Um, you're sitting on a long note. You've had beautiful things before and after it. That long note will stick out. Um, so you can call you. You have many choices. Uh, use your mat. You could crescendo a little. There, there, I know there's no crescendo mark there, but that doesn't matter. Um, you could crescendo a little bit. You, When you get to the, the F, ba, da, da, you could back off once you get to it and then crescendo into the 16th so our ear hears the energy and the sound. Be, da, 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 da. So you already are spinning that energy on the F. If I just hear you, uh, um, I can put my tuner drone on for that. Uh, so, um, and the, the evenness of the 16th notes was much better. A little bit more of that flip. Da, 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 and even though it's an eighth note, tied to a 16th note, the F with the grade. Mm -hmm. Don't back off on it. Again, keep the energy and the sound, and that will spin into the 37. And taper just a little bit, mm -hmm. and then start the next. Could you just start, um, I don't know what you're looking at. For me, the second line is your D, D, C, F, there. I'm going to start. It happens all through this piece, dotted eighths and sixteenths. Mm -hmm. um, your sixteenth is kind of lazy. Um, the dotted eighth is a little long. Mm -hmm. um, and part of it could also be zoom. I don't hear that sort. I mean, you're not accenting it, but I don't hear a nice clean 16th I, it it's in between a 16th and you're swinging it like a trip da ba da 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 again the longer note keep the inner so you hear all through this piece that elegance of a dotted eighth and 16 ba ba da and not ba ba da which is triplets can you sing me like three times that measure ba that might be the, yeah, even in your singing, the 16th is a little too lazy. Ba -da -dum. This time, articulate it so we can. Da -da -dum. Da -da -dum. That's much better. The long note, even though we're singing, keep that. Da -da -dum. Even though in the piece, yeah. So, da -da -dum. Da 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 Good. Now start their playing. <laughs> Good. 
Okay, and I'll stop you here. Um, much, much better with all of that. Um, that expressivo when you're gonna take a breath, um, cause there's stuff going on in the piano there, but the piano can wait for taper that just a little bit. Um, you don't really want to, uh, the, uh, the, you want, uh, even though you're taking a breath, you want to give it enough sound that the ear is hearing it as if it's continuing. And you want the C to be at the same volume, if not more, the lower C as the G. So we don't, and then you disappear. You're continuing that phrase. Give a little bit more sound on the lower C. So when you do that octave, um, you balance it out if you go, we don't want to hear the good old clarinet, um, unless that's what we intend to do. So to, to avoid that accent coming out on one of our not so nice notes, the high C, um, a little bit more, da, 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 and just float, push that air down as your sound goes up. Start on your F sharp. Good. I'm going to be really picky because you're really good. I can be picky. Um, don't accent the C, the bottom C. And again, I know some of it could be over Zoom, but that sounded like the, the F sharp for the G was beautiful. And you were probably like, wow, this is so great. And then <laughs> bam, you had hit that C. Um, again, uh up to you experiment whether you articulate the c um or you just use air i i would not take the chance of using my tongue there you've just taken a breath things have moved around you've already got the air going you mm -hmm. breathe in just push that air like a singer, this beautiful octave. Mm -hmm. So try it without using the tongue. Start on the F sharp again. Okay, stop you there. Uh, because that little figure that happens many times, the note before it, which is often a quarter note tied to a 16th, again, don't back off on the air or the, the worst thing you can do is back off on the sound, the air, the volume there. You again, you want the sound. It could be a slight crescendo. It could be a slight color change that leads into the fast notes. Um, so, and I was hearing each time, so again, so keep that going. You could make, and it happened, a little more elegant each time, very light, and it even says leggero and grazioso. So a little bit, so the, especially the, the 16th, just sort of place each one, but none of them louder than the others. Could you start, uh, if we're looking, Leggero and grazioso. There. Okay. And a very picky thing, the rhythm there, don't come late or early. I've heard it different way. Uh, so careful when you come off 
of that D to the E flat. So mm -hmm. again, if you're thinking about moving your sound to that run, that will help you come in at the right place. If you have to be subdividing it in your head, then that's fine too. You go dum da la da dum da la da la 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 dum da la da dum da la da la 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 la. But be very precise with that. It's not some romantic thing. A dum da la da di ba da ba di la 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 la. This little section, if it's incredibly precise rhythmically, will make it elegant. So start the same place. Keep the sound going. You have a crescendo. Um, push through the eighth note and the sixteenth. Don't go with your air or the sound. So each one is and then once you get to that F, so you've got beautiful melody there uh, because you don't have to worry about your fingers for the first time in the whole <laughs> and then we can hear I mean we've heard you play really fun little wiggling stuff and great so that is where you really open up the sound and nowhere in there back off that sound could you just start the two be bars before the uh, tempo at the effortando Again, I'm sorry, no accent on them. Oh. Um, I'm hearing. <laughs> so lightly articulate it. You could even do it with your air, but no, it's not bam, ba, da, di. Um, it's beautiful, elegant French music. This is not a German march in these bars. <laughs> uh, uh, just start right there. Da, 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 di, da, da, da. <laughs> And let's get the rhythm right. I'm hearing da 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 di da. It's not da ba ba di ba ba. So you've been teaching sax too much today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sax players out there. So yeah, da 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 di da da di da da. Ba ba da dum ba da dum ba da dum ba da dum. Whether it gets faster or slower, the relationship between them needs to stay the same. Okay, and push through the sounds. Same place. better again and I won't I will try not to say it too many more times your dotted eighths and sixteenths are not quite accurate to make this very elegant sound mm -hmm. um, also when you uh, -da -dum, -ba -dum, and you're gonna take that breath that's one phrase on the again those longer notes don't just sit there um, with this, the easiest thing to do is crescendo into the run. Um, you can 
uh, pull back on that F sharp. Um, bum, ba -dum, da -da 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 so you're leading to that D and mm -hmm. keep that air and a little bit more a cello ronda. I feel it's like bar, bar, bar. I heard three separate things. It's one full thing. Could you just start the F sharp to A? Mm -hmm. More energy on the 16th A. Bum, ba -dum, da -da -da -da. And then you're going to take off. Bum, ba -da. It's very dramatic. And for people who've never heard this piece, though, and you come, they're going to think you're going to bum, ba -da. No, you're bum, ba -dum, da -da 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 So it's a big surprise, but a little bit more energy um, on that F sharp. Uh, the A, the uh, 16th note. Yeah, don't back away on the sound. Uh, the fingers seem to be, um, it seems like when you hit the C sharp and going up, seem a little unsecure. Mm -hmm. um, I know you just picked it back up, but if you can keep them as light as possible, don't hold on to that C sharp. So, bum, ba -dum, da -da 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 your notes of important are the A, the B natural, and the D. So in this, you're not going to muck around with holding the first note of a run um, as if it were Brahms. Um, da -da 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 no. And you just open up the sound into the piano. One more time with that. Okay, you, uh, the first run was much better. Again, I'm not going to dwell on it because you obviously know how to practice it. But that run with starting on the C sharp going mm -hmm. up is a little not as clean as it should be. And that's keeping it from sounding. Now, when you get to the B, crescendo and have that energy in your head. Could I just hear that? The B down to the D. Don't back away on the sound and keep those fingers moving. No, no retardando. You're leading right into the D. This time, think of the D as a half note so you don't get to the D and go about D. D -l 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 um. uh, sing it for me. D -l 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 -um. And this time, articulate a D. D. -l 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 -um. Good. Now play it. Wow. Much better. Much better. Good. Um, so bosses, um, Silverstein bosses, uh, we have time to go on. Does anyone else want to play? You can you can go um what's going on here? Why is this off? Can you hear me, Tom? Yes. I can hear you. Uh, you can go as long as you like. Okay. Um looking at the second page. Uh so many things happen do with it. Ba da 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 dum da la da dum again. Uh, you're going to have to lightly articulate the grace note. Um, can you just, and that happens so many times. Very elegant, very light. Sing that for me. Play that, the second bar of the second page. Could you make the G just, I don't want to say short, 
But that is what it will be. Just a little bounce on. Bum, da, 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 da. Good. Now, if the grace notes can be a little bit faster, so we still hear. Bum, ba, da, da, but there's a little grace. Bum, da, 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 da. And when you get the grace notes, you're leading to that A. Bum, da, 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 da. So sing it without the grace note. Bum, ba, da, da. Bum, ba, da, da. Sorry, not the right notes. Don't worry about the notes. Okay. Bum, ba, da, da. That's it. Now sing it with bum, da, 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 da. Sing it with the grace note. Bum, ba, da, da, da. Play it. Yes. Did you hear the difference? <laughs> good, good, good. Um, coming up is this, I think, one of the trickiest measures uh actually trick it's just tricky beat uh the second half of that uh, just because of where it is on the clarinet uh push your air through it um just make sure that we hear the g and the e flat uh practice it many times so the, uh, and push the air through it. Uh, do not, it will stick out if you speed it up or you slow it down. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, this is one of those places where blow air, wiggle fingers, uh, especially there going uh, between the two registers. Mm -hmm. uh, there's lots of acoustical things happening. The worst thing is if you back off on the air there. Uh, make it a little bit safer, very subtle thing. You can give a little bit more weight to the G, either with color, air or the the time of it um so ba -da -da -dee -la -dee -la -dum, and then move on uh, i mean a very very subtle um like if there was a tenuto mark it would be maybe a half of a tenuto mark on that note okay. um start the beginning of that line <laughs> And same thing from the beginning, more a little bit more. We're back to the beginning. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing an arpeggio. Um, and you can tell me, well, you should, because that is an arpeggio. Um, but I don't, when I'm listening to music, uh, I don't want to think about theory. Sorry for any theorist out there. I want to hear musical lines. And that's this... I don't care if it's B major, D minor, uh, going a broken, arpe I don't care about any of this stuff. But when you played it that time, I heard an arpeggio. Mm -hmm. So again, air. when you get, and again, careful coming off of tied notes into 16th notes. So from, from the line. Mm -hmm. Much better some really picky things longer held notes again push the air push the sound mm -hmm. to the run because it just um again the bum da la da da ba -la 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 -la. and suddenly also for listeners ear and for musical good taste um bum da la da da which sounds great and which sounds great but you have a note in the middle that sticks out either because you do nothing or it sort of drops out. So keep the end. Um, 
so don't drop away from the sound. And there's no cello rondo this time on that last one. Beat up. And we can be a little more creative, I think, on the trill. Tell me some things that you, that time you, you, Um, what are some different things that you could do with that trill than just <laughs> um, probably start it a little slower and that's get it. into it? I yeah, think it's another that's drag it. for... You know, it's <laughs> it's it's a it's a cheap musical trick, but it, it it's not a trick. It is musical, mm -hmm. um, and if especially with a. Oh, oh my God, you know, but if we go. How you want to come out could be different. If fast or. And because it happens several times in the piece, you could do it different. I would for this piece, I would almost always start it a little bit slower. Um, could you start? Uh, that line, but the beginning before it, the the C, C, da da la da da, da da la da di, and each of the, even though there's no staccato on those eighth notes that are the downbeat, bum da la, they need to be lifted. Um, I'm glad there's no staccato mark there because most players would then go da da la da di, like it's our march, but just a little bit more of an elegant lift. So they're on that say C. And practice, I'm not gonna have you do it at that. <laughs> the b flat to the d so you've come down um just practice many many times so you're getting before it and after it um this is a place i would not add any anything to that b flat um don't make it what we might want to call musical because uh, it would be kind of taggy we don't want to hear that would be a lot easier but it takes away that beautiful elegant line that you've had for about four bars um let's go on to the next section uh because this is something new uh just go right again. Think the air going out and down mm -hmm. as those pitches go up, um, starting right there on the E flat. <laughs> know some of this is zoom because the way it works uh the e flat th the run was basically okay i could get really picky but it, that was good but when it got to the e flat i felt you backed off either you backed off on the air or you tightened up your embouchure whatever one that was the vibrations that you had for the read before the e flat you did mm -hmm. something that stopped not completely, you lessened the vibrations. So we suddenly got a thinner sound and also the, the pitch got a little strange. Um, once you start that E flat, the beginning of the bar, and especially the B flat, and you take the those notes up, push the air through. If you have to do something to get a nice E flat up there, when you get there, it's too late. Because mm -hmm. um, you've already done probably what you're doing with your embouchure in the air in that run. 
that needs to that error needs to stay. If you try to change something between that run and that E flat, we will hear it. So you want to sort of that sound to just sort of blossom and open up. So So I'm just flowing. So could you just start there on the B flat so we don't we're not dealing with the technical stuff of the other stuff. This time hold the B flat. Good. That was much better because you have the sound going already on the B flat, and then you're just pushing up to the E flat. Um, this time, do it again from the B flat with the note held and go into the G, the long G. Don't back away. You had a beautiful E flat. So why would you want to do something to your audience and yourself by not having the next note? Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I can't tell if you backed away on the air, you changed your embouchure, or you just thought musically that I've played this beautiful high E and that's all you're getting for tonight. So. Start. That I changed, I backed off there. So push through it. And the other thing, once you get up to that E flat, unless it's really awful, like really flat or something, and you really have to, once you're there and you've arrived on it, don't change it. Like, oh, I'm going to add more air or I've got to do this because um, we will hear that. So push the air through to the G. Start on the B flat again. Do you want it long? Yes. <laughs> now that was much better. Now bum ba dum ba da little little long. Little bit more on that B because we got a really cool run of notes which i will call an arpeggio but yeah. it, it, at, that is real it's very different than what we've had before the because so many times but this a ba ba bum dum and it's going back into our beginning can you uh, start the same place and that run going down starting on the b make it as clean as possible so you and i shouldn't play this so on our 16th note triplets. Um, they sound a little lazy um, and not very lifelike and elegant. So you've got and again later so make sure that they're not slow and they come right and probably with the piano it will certainly help because you will hear the eighth notes go Ba -da 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 -dim, da -da -da Again, the note before them, don't back off on the sound. Uh, whether you're articulating the beginning of the triplet or not, have that energy go. Bim, da -da -da not ba, ba -da 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 Can you sing a few times? Any bum da -da 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 bum da -da 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 Sing it three times. Bum ba -da 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 bum ba -da 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 bum ba -da 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 Good. Now start. Uh, 
the con elegancia, the second line where you've got the B flat run up. Okay. <laughs> Here's a subtle stylistic thing. Again, it's not Brahms that, um, I mean, it is gorgeous. That's your French elegance. We're not, and fortunate, I mean, he's giving us a beautiful low note. So yeah, we would wanna go. It's not in the music. It's a sort of anti-style there. So, and then it goes on. So keep that sound going and don't muck around with your triplets. Start right there on that G triplet. Unfortunately, he throws in that tongue bump, da, 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 da. Um, I'm not so sure, um, maybe a musicologist in the room would know. I'm not so sure that tonguing that uh, was what he intended. He could have, I, I don't know, uh, because it is so elegant everywhere. It's the only place he has that run tongue, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but it's there, so tongue it. Um, Again, a little bit lighter with the tongue um, mm -hmm. as long. If you, if tonguing it, especially if you're doing a video or performance, if tonguing it is going to slow it down or sound thuddy, so it's not an okay sound, don't tongue it. Because mm -hmm. maybe a musicologist or a clarinet nerd will go, oh my God, measure 73, she didn't tongue those notes. Fine. I would rather it sound beautiful and clean mm -hmm. than suddenly after you've played all this beautiful stuff that I hear something struggling. Um, if I was listening to it, I, I probably wouldn't notice if you didn't tongue it. If it's tongued and it's not beautiful, I would definitely notice it. So you'll get seven points off for not sounding beautiful and only two points off for not slurring it. So for really uh, pedantic judges, um, but for music lovers, as long as it's musical. But if you're going to tongue it, especially this style, make it as light as possible. It's, um, even that first note, the C, which is long, just as light, as little tongue as possible. Don't back away from the air and don't have the tongue back away from the reed so much. Um, then a few bars after that, you finally get espressivo. So there you've got. And you can choose what to do in there. But again, do something. Um, I may disagree with what you do like oh no i want that a flat to bloom and you say no 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 i want the b flat but do something with it. and you can start that on the high c with the sound how you go away from this high c how you leave that high c don't think of oh he wrote espressivo you know according to this on that b flat start preparing already what you're going to do even if you're not going to do anything that first beat, but that's where you can start changing the sound world. Can you start on the high C? Mm -hmm. Start on the high C? Uh, I'm sorry, the quarter note before. The oh, long, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No. the bar 
are that he wrote Espressivo. I, you may have done something, um, but my ears, you know, I, I didn't sense any difference. It sounded straight. And again, you could do, it doesn't matter. And there's no uh, decrescendo there yet. You can do a little bit of a... I would add a little bit more weight to the... And you have the decrescendo. But that interval... Just a... And you got that. Oh, if you've got a beautiful B flat, you want to hold on to it. Could you just start the C, G, B flat? Ba, da, da. Yeah, and keep going. Don't back off on that B flat. The sound, it is gorgeous. It has to carry through to those next notes. And there's a molto retenuto, and it is so the. And you take your time, and you start something. Could you start on the same place, the C? I might be zoom, but make sure your B flat uh, that you have it nice in tune and a beautiful resonant fingering. Mm -hmm. And if you take, if you need to take just a little bit more time to place that B that flat, that's fine. If you want to go right into it. I like that little subtle backing away on the G before you place the B flat because um, it's sort of a surprise. Again, that don't be predictable. 99% um, of the people will go. Um, that's perfectly respectable, uh, but predictable. So do something, start on that C. Actually start on the F before it, so you have the four sixteenth notes. Beautiful, beautiful. I, myself, because I am a uh, dynamic nut um, junkie, especially the clarinet one of the best things about the clarinet and it's easy for us and not easy for other instruments is decrescendo it's so easy for us so use that so that the that f disappears into the e flat Ah, oh, the audience will go, oh my God, that's so beautiful. If we hear, yeah, that was a decrescendo, but it kind of sounded like a march. Ba, da, 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 I'm so, da, and it just, it just lands into that. Can you just do that from the G, G, B flat, A, F, E flat, the last five notes there? It might be Zoom, but I don't want to hear fingers. Um, it, it might be Zoom. It could be where your mic is, but the...
So very, uh, you want to also be thinking of a decrescendo with your fingers and that type of energy. So no slamming of the fingers. So just those notes again. And especially the F to the E flat. I mean, you've got a beautiful F. And then unfortunately, you've got one, two, three things to mm -hmm. coordinate going down. But the, just practice the... Can you do that sort of pendulum there a few times? Good. Um, so yeah, practice that coordination with the F to the E flat. You're decrescendoing through it and careful that you don't have to, um, I mean, not that you're slamming it, but any sort of instrumental thing there will be heard. Um, don't want to keep everyone so much. Can we go to the last page? So much of the other stuff is just repeated. So all of those last four lines and actually from the solo which just recap from the beginning but especially the last four lines it's it's brilliant and you will just you've just got to have your fingers as light as possible be blowing that air don't back away from the air that would be the worst thing for you because even in the fast runs if you back away from the air the clarity of those fast runs because your fingers work they mm -hmm. are fast enough it's what you're doing behind the fingers that are causing it not to sound crisp and clear and even the next step the subtle step of making it sound elegant could we just start um one two three four lines from the beginning that octave c you hear again keeping those notes moving but you have a decrescendo there's a so you so and again very light with the dun -da -la -da -dee. can you just sing that a few times good and so and very careful there those those bars uh, subtle if you put a subtle retard into it that's fine i would rather it just go straight so it's not my body and it's done with color and sound instead of slowing it down uh slowing it down this kind of again it's predictable and obvious and i like when i'm doing these things whether it's a hundred year old piece or one written yesterday uh that you're counterintuitive um mm -hmm. not stylistically a hundred percent different but do something different because we would hear this That's perfectly respectable. And if you did that, it would be beautiful. I would rather it be done with color and sound. So start the C octave and go on.
so beautiful. Um, where are you going to breathe? Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, third line up, you're breathing after the C before it goes into the brilliant. Okay. I'm not you're, happy with that, but that's where I have yeah, it now. I'm, not ha I'm, I'm glad you're not happy with that. <laughs> um, if, if you're going to do that, take it away from the C. The, the D still needs to be right where it should be. Um, if you just sort of put a breath mark there, then that's going to be late. Bum da la da dee. And a very a quick cheat breath. Um, because you only have two bars to go with the little cheat breath that you're gonna take. Bum da la da dee. The uh the trill was good, the grace notes going in with the decrescendo. Uh for me, they were too slow. It sort of lacked the character of the piece, but that's up to you. Then take a breath, because you've had this. End of the piece, isn't it? And then, yeah. So take your time there. I mean, not as long as I did, but really sense that that's the end of the piece. And that bit of time that I took was perfectly fine. And they really were separate. But And there, then a new character. When you're doing it, remember, especially that last line, beat before it, crescendo. But not a retardando. So you're really going for that F. <laughs> And I liked what you did with them, that each one was sort of each was kind of separate, which kind of a cool character. And that was not predictable. I did not expect that. I would have expected a sort of run on, but he phrased it that way. And I liked the way that you gave, made each one kind of separate. The last one, the B flat, ba -la -da -la -da. don't back away and land on that F. It's short, keep the air going, and and then run up and decrescendo. No retardando. And let it float. Start with the little triplets there. Beautiful. I mean, that little bit there ba -da -da, almost made me laugh in a good way. In a good way, because you've been to bam de la da de la da all through the piece, bam de la da dee, and then finally, ba da da dee la da da dee la da. It's your little coda. It's a cute little coda, um, and that run F up to the B flat. Can you st play it back? Start on the B flat, go down to the F crescendo, and right back up to the B flat decrescendo. I'll hold the B flat as if it's a fermata. <laughs> Musically much better. Just clean up, clean up that run, and I'm sure you know how to clean up that run. And the last note, you know that. Again, it just floats into the air. So we don't hear your pianissimo, and then there's you hit a wall. So and 
and you still hear that note. It's even though you quit playing, they will hear it. And more important, they will feel that note still floating in the air. And if you're doing the videotape, that's where you That's where, when I went like that, that's where, that's where the music stopped for me. That good two seconds more of it still floating out. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Beautiful playing. Yeah, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice sound. Yeah, great. Thank you. Lish, you got your clarinet around? Oh, you do not want to hear that. <laughs> oh, no. Leave it to you professionals. Um, Lish is a wonderful flute. And as you see, she has the giant one behind her, the contrabass. Um, and also Yuteki, the Japanese flute player. Um, so that was a joke to ask her to play <laughs> clarinet. Great. Um, so that's it for me. Uh, ah, Elena uh, or Elana. Do you have any questions? Um, well, just thank you so much for all of this. I was really, really dreading the um, the Con Elegancia section at 55 that we worked uh -huh. on where it changes key, the key change. Yeah. That's been giving me a lot of trouble. So I feel like this is all stuff I can keep working on that will make kind of unlock this section a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think earlier you said something about sound versus, I forget to get out, but sound versus air and just you made them sound like two separate things. Uh, I don't know what I was talking about <laughs> um, I because I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. Um, it could have been that I'm talking about the, the sound you're making um, I because I don't know where you were talking, um, uh, where I was talking about about that. I'm sorry. That's, uh, I think it was about holding things. holding through long notes. I was oh, yes. to so, them as different uh, things. The longer notes, and it's not just this piece. It's even the opening of the brum. Da, you'll hear da, da, di, da, da, di. If I hear someone go da da, I'm all I'm I'm already not interested in what they're going to do because they've done nothing with that note. It's just sitting there. Uh, so that's where it's talking about sound. And again, you could be doing it with air, mostly the longer notes. Don't back away from the air. Um, you can do it with color. You can do it with a subtle crescendo. I mean, I don't want to hear da da di da da di. But, uh, da, da, de, da. but do something with the sound and it but usually that means don't back away from the air you know, as as you move into the next section and that's a sort of general thing for all long notes even if it's an eighth note that's followed by something shorter that you want that energy to carry into the next area gosh i think that was it for now, I think. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you for playing. That made the uh, afternoon much more enjoyable for me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Great. Yeah, we were making music instead of talking about it so much. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, I would like to thank, of course, Silverstein for uh, hosting this event. Uh, it was great fun for me. And thank you to the other people that were here for a bit. Uh, thanks, Alana, for playing for us, and good luck with it all.